Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and watching, coming back, whatever it is. I appreciate it. Hope your day is going great. And um, today I'm showing you the new Luminar Flex 1.1. So it's a version update, not an upgrade, but an update, which means it's no charge to current users. All you got to do, let's just get into Flex. Here we go. Uh, Luminar Flex, if you're in it, you just go in here and you say check for updates. And if you're a current owner of Luminar Flex, you'll be able to get the update at no charge. If you want to get Luminar Flex, you can do that at the link down below. Let's talk about what's new. So let me open an image and I'm just going to grab a photo right here. And one of the first things you'll notice is the filter catalog defaults to open. Um, I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest. I've so long been using Luminar that it, uh, I have to open it that it's just taking some getting used to. It doesn't bother me. It's just a little different, but that's one of the things. Um, the major thing that we're going to talk about in this video is the filter you see here, which is Accent AI 2.0. So I'm going to go ahead and get that and close that filter catalog. So this has been in Luminar 3 for a couple months, maybe a little bit longer, but it's basically an update to their original Accent AI filter. So it brings the filters uh, to par or even between Luminar Flex and Luminar 3. The difference between the two products is Luminar 3 includes the library or DAM, Digital Asset Manager. It includes that component, Luminar Flex does not. So in other words, Flex is really designed to be really a plug-in. If you're using like Lightroom or something, uh, Apple Photos, something like that, it's really designed to be the plug-in uh, instead of uh, Luminar 3, which has the DAM or the library component that uh, therefore um, you wouldn't need the Apple product or the Adobe product, whatever. I think you get it. So anyway, I want to talk about Accent AI. There's some other things. They've done a number of performance updates. Uh, they're saying it's easier to, uh, to manage workspaces and things like that. Um, and there are some new looks. But to me, the big thing is Accent AI 2.0 because I just do that to a photo and I'm done. Um, and I get pretty excited about that because that's like awesome looking. Let me just show you one more time. That's what the photo looks like. So this is along the Oregon coast, kind of got that hazy kind of afternoon thing going um, at the coast. And with Accent AI, I was able to cut through the haze, accentuate the colors, balance the light. I mean, honestly, it looks gorgeous. Um, I'm biased because I think the area is beautiful, and I'm not even talking about the fact that I took this photo. Um, I have some bias in that matter as well, but I mean, look at the difference. It's just incredible, right? So there's that to that. Um, I thought what I would do is just go in here and open a few photos and show you what Accent AI does on a few different photos, different light uh, situations, different times of day. So I'm just gonna choose Accent AI 2.0, and I'm just gonna go to 100 on each one so you can get a sense of it, but there you go. There's the before. A little bit darker, you know, not not really, actually a fairly evenly balanced exposure, but now able to keep the sky under control and brighten the center or the uh, the lower half of the frame and uh, pop the colors as well. So I think that's looking pretty sweet. Um, here's one. Um, I thought this was kind of interesting, and let me get Accent AI, and there we go. And I'm just going to bump it to 100 as I've been doing. This one I think looks really good. The rocks look good, uh, the colors look good, except I think it's picking up a little bit of blue over here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I would probably go in and get the HSL filter and take the blue down. So you can just do that, saturation of blue, and go negative, and there you go. Now this is where I would pause and say, as beautiful as I think that looks, and the other two photos, especially that first one from Oregon, just because this filter exists and you can drag it to 100 doesn't mean every photo needs it to go to 100. Also, um, my opinion is this does not replace a, a photographer. Um, in other words, this doesn't replace you as an editor. You have to make the decisions that you want to make about your photos. It does what it's programmed to do. It, it's using artificial intelligence to figure out how do I balance the light? How do I make the contrast look just right? How do I enhance the colors and do all these kind of things? But that doesn't mean it does everything you want it to do. So I think there are probably some people that are like, well, I don't want AI to take over because I, I want to do it myself. And you're looking at a guy who makes videos about how to edit your photos. So like, I'm not nervous about this because I think it's a huge time saver and a beautiful thing to have because I'm getting to my end result quicker. Um, there are some photos like that Oregon coastal photo where I could probably just use that slider and be done um, and be very happy with it. 
Um, but there are photos like this one where I would say, I'm not done, and you know what I want to do? I want to come in here and add tone, and maybe uh, bump up the contrast a little bit, and maybe a tiny bit of smart tone, maybe even pop the highlights a little bit. Um, so to me, Accent AI and any AI filters are really, they're enhancing the photographer's work and its work uh, and our workflow. It's not replacing it. So my two cents, a little bit of a soap box, uh, but let me get back to uh, some editing, um, if you can call it that, because I'm just dragging sliders, uh, or one slider mostly. Here's another example of where the filter doesn't do everything that you need it to do. Now, having said that, it's amazing. I mean, you saw it, and I'll show you more photos. It, it literally blows my mind. It's also human aware, so if you take portraits, which I do not do, um, it's not gonna really botch up the skin tones uh, and make the colors all wonky on a human, like on a face. Uh, it does a great job of balancing that, but I shoot travel images, so landscapes, a lot of cityscapes, street photography, and it does a great job. I mean, look at that. I just think that looks gorgeous, right? From there to there. Now here's what I'm saying. I'm not done with the photo. I'd probably come in with a tone and let's say golden hour, and I'm kind of winging it here, um, but I'd probably maybe lift smart tone a little bit, add some contrast into the photo, and I'm kind of winging it here. Maybe take the highlights and the whites down a little bit, and then I think I'd bump golden hour um, just to give it a nice pop. And you know what else I'd do? I'm gonna go get that HSL again, because if you notice, um, some of the blue is popping down here in the water, and I don't really want it there, so I'm gonna take saturation down on the blue, but that affects the whole photo, so I'm gonna go in here with a gradient mask, and just click and drag that gradient there into the bottom of the photo, so you can see my mask. I've got the gradient on the bottom, and what I've done within that gradient is a negative 42 on blue, so what did I do? I reduced the saturation, and then with the gradient mask, just applied it to the bottom of the photo. So another example where it did a fabulous job, let me show you where we were with Accent AI, right? So that's where we got to. Started with that. This is a photo I have passed up in my library, no exaggeration, countless times, because I'm like, I was doing long exposures, I went too long. Um, it's kind of blown out, the sea's kind of blown out, the sky's definitely kind of blown out, and it still looked that great. I added Accent AI and all of a sudden I'm like, hey, you know what? I, I could use this photo, that's actually not so bad. So a little tone, a little golden hour for some pop and take the HSL blue down in the bottom and I got a photo that I'd happily post. Um, it's not perfect, but I'm not in the business of making perfect photos. I'm in the business of making photos that I like and I like that. So um, Accent AI I think is a wonderful tool to have and I'm a fan. So I'm gonna go a couple more. Yeah, this one is a good one because this one is uh, I shot it basically in, uh, I shot, not basically, I shot it in Hallstatt, uh, Austria, uh, but it was uh, snowing and it was cloudy and messy and all that kind of stuff. Um, but this does a great job. It, it's popping the color kind of where I want it to pop, which is in these houses. And it's actually bringing up a little bit of the color there in the mountains. Let me turn this off. There's the before and the after. It's obviously bright in the foreground, but if you look at the sky, I mean, the sky's got a little bit more pop to it, but it hasn't gone out of control, right? It might be picking up a little bit of a purple tint, but that's also, I've got a, just a JPEG, not a raw file. But again, easy to fix with HSL and other filters in Luminar. So I'm gonna get another one here. I'm just kind of burning through these. I hope you don't mind I'm going fast. I don't wanna take too long because this video is basically about one filter. I mean, the update is nice. You can see that performance-wise, it's uh, I think it's performing nicely. There's a slight lag because I'm dragging it to 100, but. I mean, look at the result. It's only a microsecond, and there's the before, and there's the after. Another example of where I don't necessarily think you have to take it to 100. This one might be you know, good at, what's that, 58. So here's before, and there's the after. That's a beautiful looking photo. Again, a little biased because I took it, and you may not agree, totally okay. But uh, I mean, like, this is, it's mother nature, really. It's, it's her work, not mine. Um, but it's beautiful, right? And I think Accent AI, is a filter that you could use on something like this and say, I'm kind of done. But me being Jim, I might come in here and say, well, I want a little more golden hour pop, so maybe I want to add a little more color and you know get a little crazy. And now the greens are coming up, so then I gotta go fix the greens with HSL. You know how it works. I don't want to show you all that. Um, but you can do a lot in a very small amount of time, which is one of the things I like about Accent AI. It doesn't replace the gems of the world. It replaces a few steps that the gyms of the world have had to do in the past. So it's a time saver for us, and I'm, I'm appreciative. Um, this one I like because 
it was a foggy morning in Copenhagen. There's the before. You can kind of pick up the fog. It's a little uh, soft in the distance. Uh, but this boat in the f uh, foreground is pretty cool and a little red one tied to it. But the colors are popping out. I mean, just look. Let me turn this off one more time. Look at the oranges here and the yellows in the house and the reds in these sails in this old boat. And, I mean, it just looks gorgeous. Not to mention the red here in this, uh, this little... Uh, side boat, whatever you call it, tiny little baby boat. Um, looks awesome. And one more, I think I have one more. Yeah, another one from Copenhagen. Um, same morning, they actually had this area set up to film a movie. Um, and so they had all these antique things. The movie was um, with Eddie Redmayne. Redmayne? Uh, it was, I forgot what it was called. But it was where he played a like a transgender person. I can't remember exactly, but anyway, um, they were filming it there, and I happened to be there, so I, I got these pictures of all these old vintage things, because they were making Copenhagen look like it was, I don't know the time setting, but I'm going to go with like the 1930s or something, so anyway, I'm getting off topic. Um, this old car was out, and one more time, 100, 100 on Accent AI, great job of popping the color and bringing up the light in the foreground, but keeping that fog... I mean, look at the light in the sky. Just look at the sky on this. There's the before and there's the after. It's literally not different. And so Axiom AI was able to figure this out and say, hey, you know, I really need to accentuate the color and light in the foreground and not really mess with the stuff in the sky. Again, before and after. That's really it. I mean, there's performance updates. I find Flex is a little snappier. It was already, I think, pretty quick um, in my experience. I think it's even quicker now. And... Um, the Accent AI 2.0 filter is a wonderful addition. Again, a free update. So just go up here to Luminar Flex and say check for updates and uh, you can get your free update. If you don't have it, you can get it at the link down below. Um, it is an affiliate link. If you purchase off that, I make a small commission. You can also use my name, Jim Nix, as a coupon code. Normally saves you $10. I don't know if they're going to run a special or not for uh, Flex 1.1. Uh, .1. Sometimes when they run specials, the coupon codes don't work, but that's okay. Regardless, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you like all the sample photos. And if you have any questions, let me know. Like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. See you soon, my friends. Thanks for tuning in and watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Take care and adios.